a really strong Civ with possibly the best Eta Mononke game ever. Now we're going to be talking about Batu and Vietnam. Vietnam is one of the craziest Civs released with the New Frontier Pass. And that's saying something because the New Frontier Pass was a pass full of crazy Civs. In today's video, we're going to go over how I like to play Vietnam and any strong synergies they may have. And at the end, I'll give them a ranking for each victory type as well as an overall ranking for the Civ. Remember, if you like this video and you like my other videos, please take the time to leave me a like and consider subscribing. I am pushing really hard for a thousand subscribers this year and you are the only ones that can help me get there. Vietnam is ridiculous. All of their bonuses are ridiculous and they're just super strong. However, they can be really tricky to play at first. So their Civ ability, Nine Dragon River Delta, it limits the places where you can place districts. You can only place them on rainforests, woods, and marshes. And that seems pretty hard at first because, yes, your first few cities will have lots of district placements, but your third, fourth, fifth cities might not. But this is made up for in two ways. One, each building built in a district gives you additional yields based on the tile below it. You get science for rainforest, culture for woods, and production for marsh. And this is really strong, which means if you put a holy site on a marsh and you build a shrine, you build your temple, and you build your uh, religious building, well, you're getting plus three science plus all the faith you're getting off of that tile. So that's pretty strong. Beyond this, you actually don't remove the tile feature under your district, which is different from every other Civ in the game. This means that if you get the Sacred Path bonus to get Faith from Rainforest, and then you place a Holy Site in a cluster of Rainforest, and then you place other districts on those Rainforests, you're getting Science per building, and you're still going to get the Faith bonus from, from the Sacred Path. Pedro used to be the Rainforest Civ, and now he can't even hold a candle to Vietnam. Not only that, but you're able to plant forests at medieval fairs, which is like a super rushable civic. You just have to get through feudalism, which gets boosted most of the time. You get that usually like late medieval, early uh, renaissance, compared to conservationism, which is like late uh, atomic age or industrial age. This it does a couple of things one it boosts some of your districts because you get adjacency bonus for woods on some districts But it also makes your flat land grassland tiles not suck because now you're putting lumber mills on them and getting food and production Which is something that you don't really get a bonus towards or you're setting up breathtaking tiles for an earth goddess play and this also allows you to prepare your national parks before conservationism and get those national parks almost immediately which is faster than any other save in the game now all of these bonuses would be great by themselves you would be an a tier uh culture sieve without any of that but bot true's ability is also super good your units get plus one movement if you start on a woods tile rainforest or marsh tile this is plus two if you're in Vietnam's territory. This means you get Columbia's speedy builders and settlers as long as you're starting on those tiles. This ability made Columbia one of the most broken civs in the game. And Vietnam just gets it as well. As well as all their other stuff. You will always have rainforests and forests. So you're going to be zooming around the map. Which is even more true if you get a Monumentality Golden Age. Which is not that hard as Vietnam because you have an early unique district. If you go to war, you're zooming through enemy territory. Oh, and not to mention, you also get combat strength in those tiles, plus five for rainforest, woods, and marshes if you're outside of your territory, and plus 10, the deity combat bonus, if you're inside of it. So that finally leads us to their crossbowmen. Their cross, a crossbowman unit is a unit that you're gonna build every game, especially culture games in order to defend yourself. You don't want to get invaded and have nothing. Crossbowmen are just, you have, you always have three crossbowmen laying around for that boost anyway. The Eureka for whatever it is. Your Voi Chin, the elephants that you get to replace a crossbowman are more expensive, but they get more sight so you can hold down, you can fog bust more areas, which is important in a culture game. 
and you get more movement plus the movement you get for rainforest which is ridiculous and it costs no movement to shoot which means you can zoom across half of your empire as long as it's contiguously connected in rainforest and you can still shoot before you run out of movement at the end of that turn these things never die <laughs> ever you put them on a rainforest tile and they're going to get that plus 10 combat strength and be able to shoot and move they'll take out infantry without even much of a struggle i love to play as vietnam and i love to play as vietnam as a culture sieve i like to stack some of my early cities full of holy sites tons your unique district and uh theater squares and campuses to get all of those uh appeals bonuses or adjacency bonuses early talking about the ton the ton might be the best unique unit in or unique district sorry in the game it is a replacement for an encampment which is a district that doesn't really matter that much but it gives you culture and it gives you defensive capabilities which is something that tourism civs struggle with you get plus two culture for each ad adjacent district that means you can get up to a plus 12 culture bonus off of an encampment this is the bonus that japan uses in their like theater squares but they have to put the theater squares in the middle of a theater square pile and they don't get any extra culture you put the ton in the middle of a theater square pile and you can put a theater square on the edge and you can put an entertainment district and you're you're double dipping on culture and you're shooting through the civic tree not only that, the Tan's culture is converted to tourism when you get to flight. No other civ can do this. You get plus 12 tourism in a bunch of cities. Plus 12 is the pie in the sky perfect scenario, but it's really easy to plus, plus 6, plus 8 tourism in a lot of cities. And they don't cost population to build, which means they're not taking a valuable district slot. And they're half cost in games where you're going culture, you struggle with production a lot well you're getting this for half cost it's easy to build so i like to build them early in my early cities get all those campuses and holy sites adjacencies to them and then i expand to my third wave cities my uh third fourth fifth sixth cities where i start dropping preserves in my outer tiles instead of tons and i start putting holy sites and theater squares in my close tiles to boost the appeal of the woods that i'm planting in those cities the appeal of the tile that the preserve goes on doesn't go away because I keep the woods there so that get, you get the grove and what is the other building in the preserve the grove in the sanctuary you're gonna get amazing tile yields with no effort at all out of Vietnam the biggest issue that comes from Vietnam is its production you don't like to chop you don't want to chop a rainforest and since you're starting in rainforest you got some pretty production poor starts but chop your woods Keep your rainforest, chop your woods, replant those woods, place woods on your, fl or your flat grass grasslands or prairie tiles, turn them into lumber mills in your first th three cities where you're not going to be building national parks, and boom, production done. No issue. And you're going to have so much faith, and you're going to be able to string together some golden ages that you don't need production to expand and get builders and get settlers. With preserves, holy sites, and all of your appeal, you're going to have sick national parks, and you're going to be able to place them earlier than any other sieve in the game. Because you planted your woods about 30 turns earlier. You don't need district adjacencies for science, because you don't need a lot of dis defensive units. You're going to be using districts just for the ton. You don't need a bunch of district adjacency, which you don't get anyway. You just want that adjacency on the ton. Go for vampires if you need production, go for owls if you want that econ card, or go for void singers if you want the relics. All the societies work very well for Vietnam, except for the hermetics, because ley lines suck and the hermetics are the weakest society in the game. Vietnam gets a 10 out of 10 for culture. The, the amount of tourism that you're going to get is insane, and it's easy tourism. Play them as a culture sieve. They get an 8 out of 10 for domination and religion because all of your units get that bonus to forests. So that means apostles and missionaries. And even though I don't like religion games very much, she does it very well. And even though domination isn't as fun as culture as for Vietnam, in my opinion, she does it very well also. But in my opinion, just turtle up. Don't expand out. Science is getting a 6 out of 10. She's good at science. You get a lot of science. If you have a lot of rainforests, your campuses are going to get boosted. 
and also you'll get those uh science bonuses for buildings or you're building in your campuses or your districts but that's not her natural route and you're not really incentivized for it finally diplo is a four out of ten i don't feel that vietnam is pushed in that direction very hard you don't get a lot of production or gold bonuses you just get culture to get those wonders faster and it doesn't help you that much overall vietnam is an a plus civ they take a lot of time to get used to and their bonuses add up slowly over time but it's really hard to lose a game if you've got the right map the only thing to look out for is desert, because when you're on desert, you are completely useless. There's nothing you can do. Never settle a desert city as Vietnam. Vietnam is also not the best civ for learning the game. All of these bonuses you get, the defensive bonus especially, means you will play super greedy, and you're going to get some bad habits out of this civ. Thank you everyone for watching, and if you like this video, let me know. And let me know what you think about Vietnam down in the comments below. As always, this has been STG Sheep, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.